So now that I've determined where I want to place the ribbon, I'm going to grab on to the bow and the wire. Take one piece in your one hand, another piece of the wire in the other, and simply wrap it around your pull needle. Make sure you pull it tight and then you're going to give the wire a twist to secure it. So Not too worried about what it looks like right now because after I'm done applying all the rest of the decorations I'll go back in and fluff it. Okay. I'm going to do the same with these smaller ones. I'm going to Go to the side, grab both ends of the wire in both hands, and feed it around. See what I'm saying about the ribbon and the wire? It allows it to be able to be folded. It stands up nicely. I'm just going to rotate this again. Pull needles away and repeat the process on the other side. Now that we have that touched, I'm going to go ahead and start with my floral decorations. I just picked up some stuff from my local craft stores that were on clearance. You can really do anything with this. If you didn't want to do all of the work of creating a cornstalk wreath, you can just go and pick up, uh, whether it's a moss wreath, or a regular grapevine wreath, black wreath they have for Halloweens now. I think I even saw like a creamed color one. So you can still do this and just add some corn stalks if you'd like. If not, you can use ribbon. I mean, you can do anything with this really. It's just this um, corn stalks goes with a previous project I did last year. I made corn stalk wreaths for my windows and so I wanted to continue with that theme.
why I like the pulling rules because I can just push my floral decoration straight in with some hot glue. I think I'm getting weak. Oh, sorry. There was a hummingbird at my window. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> oh. I don't think I'm gonna take a new pair of these. I need them so much. Yeah. I think I finally wore them out. Where did they sharpen? Oh my gosh. I guess I didn't take my vitamins today. flies across the room.
will be right back. Okay, so I found the pieces I was looking for, but I do not have enough, but I am going to still continue to complete this project. I just won't have eight of these. That's how many I need. So I got to go into the store yet again <laughs> and pick some up and hopefully they still will have these. Um, so let's get going. So just um, so you know, if you do go to the store and you have these, where these are gonna be placed, I'm going to do a group of four on each side of the bell. And then I'm going to do a group of two right here. And then I'm going to do a second group of two behind. There I go. Adding some of this silvery green color just to give a little bit of contrast between the browns and the black. So here I have some extra green that I'm just going to add. And then I'm going to put some acorns back here as well. It's hard to think about things too much.
so me and my husband get into arguments all the time because I grew up calling them eggcorns. I know they're acorns. Or egg acorns. See, I can't even say it right. <laughs> Do you guys get into like little spats about little words that really don't mean anything, but it just gets under your partner's skin? <laughs> Don't forget, over here I still have to drink some clusters of this so they'll be drinking down as well. Now I'm not doing the back side of this project because this is going to be on my steps and you're really not going to see it. I'm doing enough of the sides so that way if someone's driving by or walking up to the house you're going to see that okay so we have these little pumpkins that i'm going to add to it just here and there just do this and put a pop of my little pumpkin. adding a little board up here. Okay. I should just keep these blue tendrils because they look like spider webs. All right, so I'm gonna do a dry fit with my pumpkin. Um, this will be the next step, but for now I'm just going to use my two rolls of duct tape in the center. I know I don't have those other floral pieces, but it really doesn't matter. It's not going to affect this part. So, my pumpkin is going to go like that. So what I want to do is just go in, fix like this, and add a little bit more corn stalks in and around. Don't lose your head. Anyway, some corn stalks in around the pumpkin if it doesn't run away from you. Don't mind that. Right. And now I 
take some cornstarch like I said and just fill in I apologize if this is hard to see. This is not something that I can really hold the camera and show you. Um, doing as best as I can. So I hope you get the basic idea. So now I'm satisfied. <sighs> puberty. I love you, puberty. I'm 50 and I'm still hitting puberty. Maybe it's menopause. It's menopause. Well, it's the reversal of puberty. Hmm, that would make sense. Okay, so now that I am happy with the way uh, the additional corn stalks look, my next step in this process is making a base for my jack-o'-lantern to be attached to the inside of the base 
and secured down so he won't topple over if a breeze or a storm happens to blow through. But I will tell you, some of these storms that we've been getting here have been pretty nasty. So if there's going to be wind gusts, anything over, for me, 30 miles an hour, I'm gonna be moving this indoor until the storm passes because I do not feel like going back and touching up. So hold on to your pumpkins and I will be right back. So your next step will be creating a base for your jack-o'-lantern to sit on. I went ahead and used an old container that a plant was in. I love it because it's, it's already black. They were wide enough and they were exactly what I needed for this. The only thing I had to adjust was the height. It was a little too tall. So I took a pair of scissors and took about four inches off. I took a hole puncher. Pardon me, my brain is, I'm cooking in this garage today. <laughs> I took a hole puncher and I punched out holes in the sides. Took some floral wire, tied it around, and then attached it to the inside of the base. I did that around it, so that way that is nice and secure, and you are good to go. If you don't have these, uh, you could probably go to your local dollar store and find containers or a bowl. Do the same thing, either punch through it with uh, a heating element or try like I did and just use a hole punch. <laughs> Sometimes, like I said, you just gotta use what you have around. Something else that I thought might be kind of cool, not sure if it was something that you guys might want. I picked this crazy guy up at the store. I know this is not kind of Jack Skellington Nightmare Before Christmas but this might be kind of cool too. If you wanted to stick a big skull in it, make it a little fancy. Um, let's give you some different ideas. This guy's going in my dining room and I am sticking with the jack-o'-lantern. So that is it. Here they are all lit up with purple spotlights in the evening to give it a more festive and eerie look. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and please stay tuned for Underwood Gal.